G'day mates. Today you'll learn how to track your sleep health using an Apple Watch right here on your Sleep HQ dashboard. It's our brand new Apple Health integration and it's a bloody ripper. Now you need an Apple Watch, series four and above. And once you have that, the process is pretty easy. You open up the Apple Health app on your phone, click sleep and then follow the prompts and then download our Sleep O2 app from the App Store connect your Sleep HQ account and you're good to go. Everything will happen automatically and on your dashboard you'll have all your sleep stage data combined with your CPAP therapy results. So you can see if your CPAP results match the quality of your sleep. So here we are checking out Diane's amazing Sleep HQ dashboard. And what I love about Diane's dashboard is the color coordination. Check out her amazing pink and purple hair and how it perfectly matches the Sleep HQ logo. Isn't that just a thing of beauty? I love it. Now, if there's any doctors, consultants watching and you're wondering how I do this, how I have access to Diane's profile, it's with Sleep HQ Consult, which is like an enterprise version of Sleep HQ designed for clinics. We're releasing it soon, but basically I provided Diane with a link, sleephq.com forward slash connect forward slash Nico. She clicked the link and then clicked authorize, and that gives me access to her entire profile, all her data. Anything she uploads, I can see remotely. I can also add notes, generate reports, and do a whole bunch of other stuff. The best news is, it's completely free for clinics to use. And if your patients are on a free Sleep HQ account, like them, you'll get access to their most recent 30 days of data. If they're on a pro account, like Diane, you get access to their entire history. That's how it will work, but it's pretty special. All right, enough about that. Here's the new stuff here. The sleep stage chart here, the hypnogram. This is the information that's coming straight from the Apple Watch. She wears it to bed. It syncs up with her CPAP data right here on Sleep HQ in the morning. And I'll explain it to you. So along the X axis, here's time. You can see Diane's a night owl, goes to bed 11.30. And then we've got the sleep stage data up the y-axis, we've got deep sleep here. This is this purple here. You can see when I hover my mouse over it, it says deep. Then we have our core sleep, stage one and two. This is the blue here, core. Then we have our REM sleep, where we do our dreaming, the light blue here. And then we have yellow, which is awake. Now, the thing I love about the sleep stage chart, the hypnogram, is it cuts through all the bullshit without even looking at all the CPAP data, and the breathing and everything else, I can take a look at the sleep stage chart and I know in an instant the quality of Diane's sleep, her sleep architecture. I can see it right here. Good amount of deep sleep in the beginning here. This is looking quite nice, but there's also a lot of wait periods here, here, too much, and not a whole lot of REM sleep. So that's a great instant representation of her sleep quality. CPAP results are one thing, but sleep quality is another altogether. Now check this out, this is really interesting. So this period here, this awake period. If we go down to the breathing, have a look at this, I'll zoom in. There's a whole bunch of respiratory flags on the breathing trace. Now, if she's awake, there shouldn't be any apnea flags. So what we're seeing right here is what's called false flags. These aren't really central apnea flags. It looks like it, I know, but it's not. What's happened here is a lot of the time when people are awake, they've just woken up or they're just drifting back off to sleep, their breathing goes a little bit shabby. It starts to look like this. Now, the automatic algorithm, Diane's using fixed pressure on 14. She's in CPAP mode here, which is a good thing because otherwise, her pressure would be going all over the place. Um, but the machine doesn't really know that Diane's awake. It can't tell. And we've seen this in many, many clinical studies. The algorithms, people will be lying there awake in bed and the algorithms just bump, 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 bumping up for no reason. Um, and it's because of this, all right? So this is really cool right here because if I just zoom out, Go up the top here, Diane's apnea hypopnea index is 9.3. Now, a lot of the doctors and consultants, they'd be looking at that and they'd be going, uh-oh, 
A lot of obstructive apnea, we need to increase the pressure. But with this now, we can see that half of these events are happening when she's awake. Let's go to this section here and check it out again. All right, so this is really cool. So what we have here is a transition from REM sleep. And at the end of REM sleep, we have a wake period and we see this all the time. It's what happens. Normally at the end of REM sleep, at the end of a dream, we have an arousal. It's not because of breathing or anything like that. It's just what happens. So what's happened here is exactly that. She's woken up at the end of REM sleep. Her breathing's gone a little bit shabby because she's just woken out of sleep. And we can see that the ResMed has marked all these obstructive apnea flags and they're not obstructive apnea flags. Now, the reason we know these are not obstructive apnea flags is because of this. Check this out. So the pressure here is on 14, remember? It's fixed, it's not moving. So we can see that all of a sudden, when she drifts off back to sleep, breathing becomes good again. That's how we know these are false flags because as soon as she falls asleep, breathing is stable again where the pressure hasn't changed. The pressure's still on 14. It was 14 here with the false flags. She falls asleep, still 14, and then the breathing's good. Nothing's changed. The only thing that's changed is she's fallen back asleep. So if we take out all of these flags here, 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 her actual AHI, her real AHI is actually really good. She doesn't need any pressure adjustment at all. So you can start to see why this sleep stage chart is such a powerful tool, not just for CPAP reporting, so much more than that, because over time, you'll start to understand the relationship between what happens during the day with your diet, with your exercise, your medication, your caffeine, your alcohol, your parties, your social life, your work, what's happening over here and how that impacts your sleep and then how your sleep feeds back into your health and well-being, your mood during the day and whether or not you can exercise or are you too tired to exercise. Now, just for a bit of fun, I thought we'd compare Diane's sleep statistics with yours truly. It's not a competition, but it's not every day I get to blow my own trumpet and no one else is blowing my trumpet these days. So looks like it's up to me. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh dear, time awake, 47 minutes. And here's mine, 29th of May, a couple of days back. Time awake, seven minutes. Diane, time in REM, 20 minutes. Uncle Nico, time in REM, two hours and 18 minutes. And by the way, this is with a brand new baby in the room. Um, so I've got a handicap. But here it is, look at all these beautiful REM periods here. A lot of dreams that night, good times. Uh, time in core, four hours and 19 minutes. I've got four hours and 40 minutes and time in deep sleep. Did she get, she got me. 49 minutes for Diane and Uncle Nico, only 36 minutes. Oh, I'm gonna have to work on that. Um, but that's the great thing. You can work on your sleep cycle. It can be done. Get up and go for a 30 minute walk in the morning and you will instantly see improvements in your sleep cycle. Get your 10,000 steps. Few simple things, sleep hygiene, and you will see changes in your sleep cycle. Get your CPAP therapy right. All right, but that's pretty cool. Now we'll check out one more sleep profile. Who have we got? Peter Lou. G'day, Pete. He's a very friendly member over on the Sleep HQ Pro community. If you'd like to join that community, click the link above. Now, I wanna show you something with Peter. Pete's been with us from the beginning. Let's go back and check out his trends. All right. Check this out. When do you start? Back in October. Ah, here we go. Abracadabra. This is super impressive and it just makes me so happy because it shows that this platform is just changing people's therapy, it's changing people's sleep, changing people's lives. All right, so back here in the beginning, PD Pops, AHI 35.97. Look at it now. Look at this beautiful trend. You can just see him working, working away, working away, gradually coming down. Look at this, and it's still coming down. Look at it, where is it at? Right down here now, 0 0.32. He can't go much further, but he's nearly at 0, 0.0, and I reckon he's gonna get there. Um, but 
These are the results that anyone can achieve and it's just from help through the Sleep HQ Pro community. It's having access to your CPAP data and just working on it, guys, just working on it. Um, but I wanted to show you that. All right, let's check out his uh, sleep stage. Here it is. I reckon Pete has got me. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this, guys. This is what you're after. This is exactly what you're after here. Um, beautiful structure. He's got one little bit of wake here. One little section, but overall, it's just looking fantastic. Now, this is interesting. Check this out. I've just spotted this here. Look at the airflow limitation here. All right, and see how it lines up perfectly with REM sleep. Airflow limitation increase, REM sleep. Airflow limitation increase, REM sleep, and again and again. Apple is spot on with this sleep stage. It's really, really accurate. I love it. Um, so why is there more airflow limitation during REM sleep? Because during REM sleep, our muscles relax. We go into a state of almost uh, paralysis, so we don't act out our dreams. And when we get this atonia and our muscles relax, everything just goes bleh. Um, and that's why we normally get the pressure increases during REM, you can almost see them as well, also in response to the airflow limitation. So you start to see how all the pieces of the puzzles fit together Blood oxygen levels looking awesome. Not a whole lot of movement. Like this is a good, good, good sleep. And his leak rates are awesome. He's been working so hard on his leak rates and it's really paying dividends. So mate, it's an A plus all round. And just for fun, let's compare your stats with mine as well. I hate to say it, but I think Pete's stolen my crown here. Let's check it out, time awake. One minute, what was I? Seven minutes. Time in REM, one hour and 54 minutes. Oh, down 27 minutes on the prior day. What was I? Two hours and 18 minutes. Yes, one for Uncle Nico. Time in core, five hours and 46 minutes. Time in core, five hours and 40 minutes. He's got me there. Deep sleep, 45 minutes. Deep sleep, 36 minutes. <laughs> oh no. We have a new champion, Peter. Congratulations, mate. And just congratulations on your CPAP journey, on your sleep journey, on your health journey, mate. You are smashing goals and it's very impressive and I'm very proud of you. Anyway, guys, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching. Until next time, sleep well, look after your mates and I'll see you soon. Cheers. G'day, mates. This video is sponsored by Sleep HQ. Upload, review and share your detailed CPAP reports with anyone from anywhere. Visit sleephq.com and join our free community today.